Sir Arthur Witten Brown was born in Glasgow to American parents. He began a career in engineering before the outbreak of World War I and undertook an apprenticeship with British Westinghouse in Manchester. In 1914, he enlisted in the ranks of the University and Public Schools Brigade for which he had to take out British citizenship. The ranks of the UPS were full of potential officers and Brown was one of those who sought a commission to become a second lieutenant in the 3rd Special Reserve Battalion of the Manchester Regiment. After service in France, he was seconded to 2nd Squadron Royal Flying Corps as an observer. Brown's aircraft was shot down by anti-aircraft fire in France while on artillery observation duties. He was sent back to England to recuperate but returned only to be shot down again on the 10th of November 1915, this time with a punctured fuel tank. On this occasion, he was on a reconnaissance flight in a BE-2C aircraft. Brown and his pilot, 2nd Lieutenant H.W. Medlicott, were captured by the Germans. In June 1918, Medlicott was shot by the Germans while attempting to escape for the 14th time. Brown was interned in Switzerland and later repatriated in September 1917. After a period of leave, he went to work with Major Kennedy, RAF, in the Ministry of Munitions. This led to Sir Arthur Brown meeting Kennedy's daughters, one of whom, Kathleen, he later married. After the war, he sought various appointments that would give him the security to allow him to marry. One of the firms he approached was Vickers, a consequence of which was that he was asked if he would be the navigator for the proposed transatlantic flight, partnering John Alcock, who had already been chosen as pilot. The flight from St. John's, Newfoundland to Clifton, Connemara Island took place on the 14th of June 1919. They departed St. John's at 1.45pm local time and landed in Derry Gimler Bog 16 hours and 12 minutes later after flying 1,000 980 miles or 3,168 kilometres. The flight was made in a modified Vickers Vimy bomber and won a £10,000 prize offered by London's Daily Mail newspaper for the first non-stop flight across the Atlantic. Sir Arthur Whitton Brown took a toy cat mascot on the flight with him. This was called Twinkle Toes. The mascot is now on display at the RAF Museum, Cosford. The flight wasn't a smooth one. They took off from St. John's, Newfoundland at 1.45pm UK time. The overloaded aircraft had difficulty taking off from the rough field and only barely missed the tops of the trees. At 5.20, the wind-driven electrical generator failed depriving them of radio contact and also their intercom and heating. An exhaust pipe burst shortly afterwards, causing a frightening noise which made conversation impossible without the failed intercom. At 5pm, they also had to fly through thick fog. This was serious because it prevented Brown from being able to navigate using his sextant. Blind flying in fog or cloud should only be undertaken with gyroscopic instruments, which they did not have. John Alcock twice lost control of the aircraft and nearly hit the sea after a spiral dive. He also had to deal with a broken trim control that made the plane become very nose heavy as fuel was continuously consumed. At 12.15am, Arthur Witten Brown got a glimpse of the stars and could use his sextant and found that they were on course. Their electrical heating suits had failed, making them very cold in the open cockpit. At 3am, they flew into a large snowstorm. They were drenched by rain, their instruments iced up, and the plane was in danger of icing and becoming unflyable. The carburettors also iced up, 
It has been said that Brown had to climb out onto the wings to clear the engines, although he made no mention of that. They finally made landfall in County Galway, landing at 8.40am on the 15th of June 1919, not far from their intended landing place. This was after less than 16 hours of flying time. The aircraft was damaged upon arrival because they landed in what appeared to be, from the air at least, to be a suitable green field, but which turned out to be Derry Gimlar Bog near Clifton in County Galway in Ireland. This caused the aircraft to nosedive, although neither of the airmen was hurt. Brown said that if the weather had been good, they could have pressed on to London. A few hours after the flight, both Brown and Alcock were honoured with a reception at Windsor Castle, during which King George V invested them with their insignia as Knights Commanders of the Order of the British Empire. Later, Brown worked for Metropolitan Vickers, Metrovic, the company that had once been British Westinghouse. In 1923, Sir Arthur was appointed as general manager of the Swansea branch of Metropolitan Vickers. His office was in Metrovic House, Wine Street, Swansea. The first home in Swansea for Sir Arthur and Lady Kathleen Witten Brown was at Overland Road, Mumbles, and there is a plaque on the outside wall of this house today stating this. They then moved initially to 24 Belgrave Court and then to 3 Belgrave Court when Arthur Jr. was born in 1922. During World War II, Sir Arthur Witten Brown served in the Home Guard as a Lieutenant Colonel before resigning his commission in July 1941. He rejoined the RAF and worked in RAF Training Command as a pilot officer dealing with navigation. His health deteriorated and by mid-1943 he had to resign from the RAF VR and give up his Air Training Corps commitments on medical advice. Sir Arthur's only son, Arthur, known as Buster, was sadly killed on the night of the 5th to 6th of June 1944. He was aged 22 and was serving with the RAF as a flight lieutenant. His aircraft, a de Havilland Mosquito 6 NT-122 of 605 Squadron, crashed in the Netherlands. Buster was buried at the General Cemetery in Horn, the town closest to the crash. The death of his only son affected Brown badly. By 1948, his health had again deteriorated, although he was allowed to undertake restricted duties as general manager for Metropolitan Vickers at the Wine Street Swansea offices. Brown was also the founder of the 215 Squadron Air Training Corps Swansea. The design of the 215 City of Swansea Air Training Corps includes an image of the sextant used by Sir Arthur Witton Brown, who was the navigator on the epic transatlantic flight. Sir Arthur's wife, Lady Kathleen Witton Brown, was a member of the ATS and founder member of the Swansea Flying Club. Sir Arthur Witton Brown died in his sleep on the 4th of October 1948 at Belgrave Court, Upland, Swansea. He died from an accidental overdose of veronal, a sleeping pill, at the age of 62. Brown's widow died on the 1st of May 1952, aged 56, at Brunswick Nursing Home for Nonny, Swansea. Brown and his wife's ashes are interred at St. Margaret Churchyard, Tyler's Green, Buckinghamshire, England. On the 50th anniversary of the epic flight, 14th of June 1969, there was a grand air show and fete held at Swansea Airport to celebrate the occasion. In May 1999, a replica of a Vickers Vimy biplane visited Swansea Airport and stayed overnight. Later in the year, the biplane flew to South Africa and on the 14th of June 2019, an excellent exhibition was held at Swansea Museum to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the flight. 
At the opening ceremony, a scale model of the Vickers Vimy biplane was unveiled. The exhibition lasted for a few months, but the model of the biplane was only there for one day. One of the propellers from the Vickers Vimy was given to Sir Arthur Whitton Brown and hung for many years on the wall of his office in Swansea before he presented it to the RAF College Cranwell. It is believed to have been displayed in the RAF Careers Office in Holborn until 1990. It is now in use today as a ceiling fan in Luigi Malone's restaurant in Cork, Ireland. These photographs of the propeller were taken by Lauren, manager of Luigi Malone's. The other propeller, serial number G1184N6, was originally given to the Vickers Works manager at Brooklyn's Percy Maxwell Muller. It was displayed there for many years, suspended inside the transatlantic terminal, Terminal 3, at London's Heathrow Airport. In October 1990, it was donated by the BAA, via its former chairman Sir Peter Macefield, to Brooklyn's Museum, where it is now displayed as part of a full-size Vimy Wall mural in the Vickers building. A number of monuments have in fact been erected within the UK, Ireland and Newfoundland to commemorate the flight.